Well, the midterm elections of the United States of America may have come and gone, but the lessons of the exercise are still topics of discourse in other countries, especially the 55 countries that sent their delegates to observe the process. Our correspondent, Amy Thompson, who taught with the observer group, highlights some features of the American electoral system and the lessons that Nigeria and other countries can learn from the experience. The International Foundation for Electoral Systems, IFES, is hosting about 160 delegates who are in charge of electioneering in countries like China, Australia, Libya, Nigeria, and 51 others, with the sole aim of exposing how elections are conducted in the United States and how best they can customize the lessons to suit their countries. It's not just an indoor assignment, so they're organized into batches and taken to see firsthand how the system works. One of the polling stations in Arlington, Virginia, is an elementary school. Even from outside, one of the major differences between the American electoral laws and some other countries can be seen. In the United States, there's no quiet time before the elections, implying that politicians and their campaigners can keep on trying to win electorates over even at the polling station on election days, except that agents have to stay about 40 feet away in Virginia from actual voting stations. The distance is different for different states, with the farthest being 100 feet. I'm here to hand out sample ballots for the Democratic Party, and this is to help people um, know who the candidates are for our party and also what our recommendations are on voting for the bond issues and the constitutional amendments. Even the candidates are allowed to visit and interact with the people as a final way to appeal to voters, although they can only spend 10 minutes at a police station. Inside, it's estimated that a voter spends about five minutes for the whole process, beginning with identification. Recently, the United States electoral bodies have added the requirement of photo identity for voting, and it's yet to settle down with a handful of Americans. As you move to a photo identification, you have people who are concerned both about the rights of privacy uh, of the citizen, as well as people who are concerned about the incidence of fraud. I happen to believe, on a personal basis, that this entire debate is being motivated by people who believe there is fraud, but they cannot show any evidence of fraud taking place in our system. The election officials are paid citizens who apply for the job prior to the elections. They are given tests and, if satisfactory, given eight-hour training before they assume the temporary job paid by funds from the Board of Election in the district. Everyone that's working here is paid volunteers. And the reason we're paid volunteers is for the simple fact that, you know, realistically, um, the day of the election is almost like a 14-hour day. Yeah. So if you're not a paid volunteer, you can be like, okay, I'm out of here. Each station is called precinct and has between 1,000 and 4,000 voters. But for voters who are not registered there or who cannot give proper identification, they may be allowed provisional voting, implying that their votes may or may not be counted. They will know this after 10 days as well as why they were disqualified if their votes were not counted. Considerations such as this and avenues like voting by mail, absentee voting, as well as early voting are not practiced in many countries. I think with time we will be able to handle those things. Um, it's all a matter of trust built over time. Uh, in our own context, there are legal constraints. Uh, for example, um, we cannot uh, allow for uh, diaspora voting uh, because the laws are restrictive. The laws are clear that you have to vote where you have registered and you cannot register out, uh, outside the country. Another precinct which the delegates observe is a church in D.C. area open to all voters irrespective of denomination or religion as long as it's been approved by the Board of Election. It's a good example of the practice of different voting systems by the United States. Voters choose if they want to use touch screen or paper ballots. These are some of the lessons which the visiting delegates take back to their countries with the responsibility of infusing into their system for a better democracy. Amy Thompson reporting for Channels Television News.
But now combating pneumonia is essential to achieving the Millennium Development Goals related to health and child survival. But the infection still accounts for thousands of deaths globally. But well, Nigeria not left behind. Now on Focus on Health tonight, our correspondent Yomi Otaibe looks at how to stop thousands of children and the elderly from succumbing to pneumonia disease. Two extremes of life. The very young under two years and those above 65 years. These most vulnerable groups are exposed to pneumonia infection owing to their levels of immunity. But what causes pneumonia? Let's find out the knowledge in the general population. Pneumonia is a chest infection. Um, yeah. So chest infection, is it caused by cold? I'm not sure. I don't understand anything for pneumonia. Pneumonia? What does that mean? I don't understand it. When you take in excess of guava seed without being chewed, it can cause pneumonia. Certainly more awareness creation is needed on pneumonia, which is caused by bacteria and viruses and spread in a number of ways. What causes pneumonia is inhaling the organism most times. And this organism can come from the air or aspirating it when something comes from the mouth and the person aspirates into the lungs. Or sometimes it can come from organisms from other parts of the body. Smoking is a risk factor because smoking damages your airways. So people who smoke are at higher risk of pneumonia. Alcoholics are also at higher risk of pneumonia because sometimes they get drowsy. And when they are drunk and drowsy, what happens is that they have a higher chance of aspirating. And I said aspiration is one of the routes where, through which you can get organisms into your lungs. Drinking cold water or cold drinks does not cause pneumonia. There has to be an infection. But during certain seasons, when the weather is cold, um, the airways are more prone to being infected by organisms, particularly viral organisms. Pneumonia, which has symptoms such as cough, fever, chest pain, fast breathing and feeling short of breath, among others, is still among the leading killers of children under five years, accounting for 15% of deaths or an estimated 935,000 children worldwide in 2013. In Nigeria, the burden of um, pneumonia is quite high, like in other parts of the world, because pneumonia complicates almost all other conditions. So the challenge is facing the treatment of pneumonia in Nigeria include lack of appropriate knowledge by the doctors and not following guidelines. Though we don't have real local guidelines based on organisms that are found in Nigeria, which is a real challenge because ideally we should have um, data showing the common organisms causing pneumonia in Nigeria such that we have the right drugs that we should use when people have pneumonia in Nigeria. Right now we mostly follow international guidelines. Although Haemophilus influenza type B is part of the pentavalent vaccine given during routine immunization in Nigeria, adding the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine to the program will go a long way towards protecting the children from pneumonia-causing organisms. What the government should do at this stage is to up, reduce or up pay for people to be able to have the children immunized for pneumonia. Aside from vaccines, simple measures such as early and exclusive breastfeeding, hand washing with soap and water, and provision of micronutrients will also reduce the incidence of pneumonia. Your me outside reporting for Channel's Television News. Business news now. Nigeria is ranked low among countries that promote the cause of women in politics, education, and health. 
This is contained in the 2014 Gender Gap Report released by the World Economic Forum as Nigeria takes the 118th position out of the 140 countries surveyed. Correspondent Baraj Akinole takes a look at the factors that may be responsible for this development. Women are regarded as a vehicle of transformation in any society. Their roles in the family and the country are described as critical. Despite the potential as well as contribution to humanity, they still been faced with numerous challenges. This is why the World Economic Forum, since 2006, designed a framework for capturing the magnitude of gender-based disparities and tracking the progress. This year is a ninth edition of the index, allowing for time series analysis on the changing patterns of gender equality around the world. The index benchmarks national gender gaps on economic, political, education and health criteria and provides country rankings that allow for effective comparisons across regions and income groups. The rankings are designed to create greater awareness among a global audience of the challenges posed by gender gaps and the opportunities created by reducing them. This year's report tracks the following. The participation of the female labor force over the male, wage equality between women and men for similar work, and female literacy rates over the male, among others. Out of the 142 countries surveyed on the index, Nigeria is ranked 118. The scorecard shows that the participation of women in the labor force, the wage equality, literacy rates, and healthy life expectancy is still low compared with other countries. Despite this report, some women are of the view that there is some improvement in the country. Starting from my local environment, Nigeria, I think there has been some improvement in the public sector, in the private sector. Um, I think more should be done. When you talk about gender participation in management, in, uh, in the board, um, I believe women should be we sh women should not be given the position just because they are women. They should be given the position because they are able to perform, because they are able to deliver. Um, While this may sound encouraging, cultural perception of women seems to affect their lives. In our country, Nigeria, men in politics, men tend to dominate everywhere. So they tend to smuggle the women in in some positions that they know that is not going to conflict with their ego. In Africa, generally, we believe that men are always on top. What can be done to improve the level of women participation in the development of the economy, as well as the general well-being? We need role models. We need to take these opportunities and not wait for them to be given to us. I think we need to just rise to the challenge of saying that we can do this as well as anybody else can. And so we need to, we not only have to be given the opportunity, we need to take these opportunities ourselves. Rather than take some time for women to attain the same level as their male counterpart, the establishment of policies and legislation by the government have been identified as catalysts for improving their lives. And one hopes that when the next index comes out, Nigeria's ranking would have improved. Balaji Akimali for Channel's Television News. Well, I apologize for the non-sync and not uh, some of those uh, pictures you saw in that report. The Nigerian equities market closed on a positive note this week as gains recorded at the beginning of the week ended the all share index's bearish run that lasted for 12 straight days. The key broad index appreciated by 6.52% to end the week at 35,381.02. Market capitalization also rose to 11.71 trillion naira. Market breadth returned positive as the 51 gainers in 28 laggards were recorded. On the gainers list, Ikeja Hotel, Cadbury and Transco were the top three price appreciators of the week. On the flip side, investors turned down the shares of Champion Breweries, Saplots and Cutex. Bank stocks were the major contributors to market turnover, including FBN Holdings, Zenith Bank and FCMB. At the end of the week, a total of 1.85 billion shares had been exchanged by investors, valued at 30.86 billion naira in 27,397 deals.
Next on the news at 10, Super Eagles keep hope alive towards securing Afghan ticket after a vital 2-0 win over Congo in Point Noir. That's on Sports News. Stay with us.